Greetings, fisher people. Captain Chris here with your R Community Now and your Striper Express Weekly Fishing Report. Guys, not much has changed this week in the pattern except it's early, early, early and late, late, late. Not much going on in the middle of the day. A lot of the passing fronts have seemed to leave us. Beautiful sunshine out and stripers, not too fond of that sunshine for the most part. Pretty much still on the sassy shad bite for the larger fish and the nice quality fish. Just throwing it out there. It seems to be that the fish are kicking it down about 15 to 35 feet unless they're on the surface feeding. When they're on the surface feeding on these spawning shad, action's pretty fast, fish are pretty easy to catch. When they sound a little bit and get suspended out in that deep water, it does get a little trickier and you really need to key in on cadences and stuff like that. I cannot stress how important it's been this week to throw that jig out, let it sink down, your three count, your five count. But really, when you're working it in, I'm gonna get my hand right here in front of that camera and you're turning it, stop. You're turning it and turning it, stop. Then a couple, three fast cadences. Sometimes it's three on, stop. Three on, stop. Twitch. If you think you've gotten above them, hit that button and drop it down a few seconds. Get back down into them again. Work that thing up. And anything, anything happens to that lure. It's a strike, set it. You're not on the bottom, you're in suspended fish. So if anything tugs on that thing, it is not a tree. It is a fish. Be ready. Also, another bite that is working, but it's a lot of small juvenile fish and white bass. It's just a regular old jigging spoon, a jigging slab. You can see this one's been chewed on a little bit. And uh, you just take it, and it's a real simple bite, guys. They tend to be in the eight to 20 foot of water. Drop it straight over the side, keeping your thumb on that spool in case one strikes it on the fall or you hit the bottom. And it's a real erratic lift and shake, but let it fall with a tight line. You've got to keep in contact with this bait. 90% of the time, they'll strike it at the very top of your lift or on the fall. If they are biting it and lifting up, they're on fire and they'll hit anything. Most of the time, it's a reaction. Jig, 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 let it fall. It stops before it hits the bottom. You've got to know where your bottom is, where your contact zone is, and be in contact with that bait. Tight line to it when it's falling. Don't just let it all fall erratically. You'll never know if they bite it. Another thing too, it tends to help to use a bait casting combo for this to feel the strikes on the fall because if the line is just peeling off a spinning reel, you won't know if they bit it unless they engulf it and just swim away with it and hook themselves. As far as areas on the lake, the lake is trying to clear, but it's still very, very muddy. I've still been fishing a lot around Soldier Creek, Caney Creek, Oldwell Point, over to Tabletop, to the mouth of Little Mineral, and I've even had some fish up the Washita here and there but the water's really muddy. And if they're not schooling, they're really not biting. And I'm having to stay in the clearer areas of the lake to be able to get struck when they're not on the feed. I mean, the shad are all over the banks. Top water is gonna start any day. I've had a few swirls, a few hits. I just can't wait. This warm weather is gonna bring it on. It will be gangbusters like crazy. Top water, I can't wait. And I bet you since it's starting late this year, it will go into June. I have seen it before.